And welcome back. We're working on the GTI. Uh, where have I been? I've been working on the GTI. I haven't been making any film on the v GTI just today because I'm doing a very special project on it that I think a lot of people are doing wrong and, and it's probably something that you guys want to know because it is a repair that applies to every single car on the market right now. They all have polymer gas tanks, plastic, or should I say Teflon plastic gas tanks, okay? I say Teflon because nothing will stick to it. No JB Well, no steel epoxy. It will not stick to these Teflon base uh, gas tanks, okay? They, they'll just flake right off. Case in point, look at This thing just flaked right off. You can see where the cracks were right there. You can see one right there. And there's the other crack right there. And basically, after like 24 hours of driving, this thing just flaked right off. It, it, it will not stick, even if you sand it and everything, which I did. It, didn't, it does not work. So, those gas tanks are like $300 on eBay. And I wasn't about to spend $300 on eBay. <laughs> More like $400. Um, <laughs> I'm crazy, but I'm not that stupid. So, I, you know, I went on YouTube to see how they fix them. And uh, a lot of people are using... They're using JB Weld. They're using steel epoxy, which, which this is. I used JB Weld first, and it only lasted like half a day, and it flaked off. Then I used steel epoxy, which is this is it, uh, steel epoxy, and it flaked right off also. So it's Teflon. Basically, it's Teflon plastic. It's not going to stick. So the only way to fix it is using one of these. It is basically using a Teflon plastic, or should I say PTFE uh, plastic. This is the same thing as these plastic tanks or oil things okay so yeah the same thing the thing the difference is that this is specifically engineered for uh, a gas tank see it's got reinforcement back here i don't know if this comes off or what the hell this is i need to read the instruction first but this is very very flexible very rubbery and basically it gets installed with this these chemicals uh, some of it is chemicals and the other one's an activator and basically they get like super duper hot and basically melts this plastic to the gas tank and the gas tank to this plastic so you have a bond from both sides and making it into a permanent uh, fix yeah what they're doing a lot of the guys are using uh, basically a soldering iron to fix it the problem is if it's a fatigue crack that's going to crack right there again within you know, days, weeks, months, maybe a year or two, but it will crack from there because it's a fatigue crack. Okay, so it's going to continue to fatigue in that area because of the, you know, the, the flexing and, you know, all that fuel in there, flexing the whole gas tank. Not only that, the pressure that builds up in there, you know, it's a flex thing. So eventually they will crack in the same location. So um, this is for like, if you're running around and you made a hole on your gas tank, okay, this is a good way to fix it. Because that's not a flex point, okay, where you made the hole uh, with whatever debris you did. But a flex point, a flex crack, you don't, no, 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 bad idea. So JB Weld and that, bad idea for, my, for me because where it cracked, it's a flex point. So this is the correct way of fixing it. So to lower this gas tank is actually very easy on these GTIs. Very, very simple. There's a wire right here that goes around and that'll allow it to uncouple from here, the whole thing that goes down on the gas tank. So it's just a stupid little wire. It's right here somewhere. There it is. See? This is the wire. See? Now this thing can be pushed in. See? So it can go down. It's no big deal. Okay, you don't have to remove that. So put that there. And then we go down here. Right there, we have a 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, and that disconnects this whole tank. Because it's a tank. I mean, this thing holds probably like a gallon and a half to two gallons right here. Oh, look, see? Coilovers. It's got the, this part and then it's got the soft ones on the top. But it's still too, too harsh. Now the straps. Okay, on this gas tank, on this car, it's got one strap and two straps going to one bolt and a bracket. Up front, it's basically the same thing as this. 
they're all separated, the three of them. Over there, over there, and over here. But basically, it's really simple. There's plenty of room to work with. I think you can figure it out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the, these straps, but I'm gonna support this with the uh, engine uh, uh, hoist, <laughs> not a hoist. <laughs> It's the thing for the motorcycles, you know, to raise them so you can work on the on your motorcycles or quads. So I'm going to use that jack right here to hold the whole thing. And we're just going to lower it a little bit. I don't need to lower it a lot because the cracks are right here. Exactly right here. Just enough to where I can work with it. So I'm not going to disconnect my uh, fuel lines or anything like that. Because I already know how it's all set up up there. So it's not going to interfere with anything. So Like on this car, you don't have to worry about any of those connections, any of these pipes or vents and bullshit. Don't worry about that shit. That whole thing, it comes with the whole tank. Don't worry about that. So it drops down with the whole tank. Really easy to install and, or uninstall and reinstall. So now those. Take that off. I'm gonna do all five and I'll bring you back. So I'm getting ready to lower it because I got all the nuts off the straps. So just make sure your gas tank is almost empty. This one's almost empty. It's got about a quarter of a tank or less, probably less. And uh, otherwise you're gonna make a, a mess. So, all right, let's see what happens. Oh, she's coming down real quick. That's about it. I don't need to go any lower than that. I just need a needed access in this area. In this area right here. This is where the cracks are. Just so I can show you. Crack. Crack. And there's a crack that, that inter intersects with this one like a T. It goes up and up like that. To there. You can see how the weeping. See, you see that? Okay. That's why it looks like this. Because it's been doing this for many, many years or decades. Probably decades. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-sand everything. And uh, we'll, we'll see how this shit's gonna fit. Okay, all done. Uh, I had to, uh, I had to drill all the cracks, the, the beginnings of the crack. Like way up there, 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 and here. You can't really see that one, but that one's there. Anyways, if you don't do that, that's exactly where it's going to continue to run up. You know what I'm saying? So you have to drill them so that they don't continue cracking. According to the instructions, I'm just doing what the instructions say. So, let's prep it now. Yeah, there's another hole right there. Another crack at the drill it right there. The Damn, I guess this is a fatigue area. So, this is what I'm gonna be doing. We're just removing the sheen, the shiny part. It's gotta be dull, 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 dull. And then we're gonna clean it with uh, acetone. Oh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do it right now. Now we go over here. Okay, I think, I think that's it. Holy shit. Okay, so I'm probably gonna go a little bit lower here, just in case. So I actually read the instructions, believe it or not. Normally I never do that. But this is a little complex, so we have to read the instructions. There goes my ego. Oh well. So this is the patch. This brown part goes towards the tank, like yay. Yay. Okay. I'm supposed to cut it to meet the, you know. So I'm not going to use all of it. That's what I'm trying to say. And basically, use the prep first. It says prep right there. This is the prep right there and just let it dry. And then I'm supposed to spray this 
which is the uh, activator accelerator. Same thing, spray all, you know, generally all around it and basically let dry. Then this guy, this guy gets a shitload of that stuff on, on this side of the brown side. And then you squish this on and it will get hot. You might need a hair dryer or a heat gun to get the whole system to start reacting so that the, everything starts melting and bonding together. Okay, so this is gonna be fun. So I'm gonna get my heat, my hair dryer and uh, just to make sure, but then, but first I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you know, cut it around so that I can put the patch on. So I'm gonna cut the patch first and then we'll do the other shit. So this is what I ended up with. It's gonna go like this. Right there, like yay, okie doke. So I made, I made a couple of marks so that I can follow it, um, you know, so that I can place this correctly. So, so we're gonna poly prep, ah, poly prep, and then we're gonna do the activator spray on, they're both spray ons, and then this goop is gonna go on this guy and it's gonna be very liberal like it to just squeeze it on and make it really nice and gooey we're gonna do the poly prep it's just a spray on here it goes oh perfect So let dry. Okay, let dry. And then prep this guy with the uh, SI blue, we're gonna put this shit full of that stuff. And it's from what I read, you put it on liberally. So, well, I'm gonna do it on the floor, you can't see, but. I'm... Okay, it's on there liberally, like really liberal. And what I saw was the guy that was doing this on YouTube, he also did it over here. The instruction doesn't say to do this. I'm just doing it like the guy from YouTube. How did this go? Oh dear God. That I'm just squish, squishing out the air pockets. This shit sticks. I will say that. Okay. So I feel like there's there's heat there, but I'm gonna still hit it with this shit. That's it. See if I can turn it off. I don't know how to turn it off, so I'm gonna unplug it. Just to give you an idea, this is how my fingers ended up. So, they're very uh, glued. Yeah, see? <laughs> glued. Um, 
Oh, this is going to be a mother to take off. Okay, now, the instructions say that we have to do a perimeter with this guy. The, the stuff that we did liberally on the patch. Like, we have to do a perimeter right here. I think that's it. I'm gonna spray some activator. It's all plugged up now. All right. <laughs> Looks like shit. I don't give a shit. As long as it plugs up, we're good. All right. So we're gonna let that dry. And once the heat is out of there, once it goes to a room temperature, it should uh, be ready to bolt up the tank. We should be fine. So there you go. It's nice and cool to the touch. I made a freaking mess with that shit. I mean, I got it everywhere. But um, I, I don't think it matters. So don't worry about it. Everything seems to be sealed. So we're just going to put it back. And uh, we're going to add some gas and see if it leaks. It, it shouldn't leak. This is the correct way to fix this. My problem, like I said, look at it. It's got a, one of these humps. It's got to turn this way and a twist this way. And it's, it's, it's just really hard to get these wrinkles out. Although I pressed as hard as I could right here, it would not go down anymore. It felt solid. Like whatever was in here turned into a solid uh, ball of goop. So hopefully that won't affect anything. But we'll find out within a couple of days or weeks. See if this thing holds. If it holds fuel, holds fuel. If it doesn't, I guess I'll just go get a 300 and no, it's actually like almost $400 gas tank on ebay for a used one i was like what the fuck so i might have to do that but i don't think so i have, I have a feeling that this is going to be successful i still have more of these you know if i have to like i don't know keep going or whatever <laughs> keep going <laughs> okay i didn't even use the squeegee because the, the the area is just so weird you know that i have to put my my hand in there press down and shit and it's just Okay, whatever. Okay, we're going away. Uh, I'm gonna put this back on and uh, add some fuel. Okay, tank is back in. This thing is indispensable for beetles, air cooled, you know, for the engine up and down. Yeah. Uh, and for gas tanks, I guess. Uh, that's the way it looks. Okay. Let's see. Perfect. Hangers are in. Uh, I gotta clean all this residue. And uh, so that I, it, that way I know if, if it's been leaking or not. So, I'm going to put my wheel back on. And uh, we'll go fill it up and see what happens. It's been about a month now. So, um, I didn't want to post a video and uh, have it leak, you know, two days later. And uh, so it's been about a month. Uh, driven into LA and everywhere to work and shit like that. And uh, this is, this is, has become my daily driver. Temporarily, I will go back to the bug because I got some uh, modifications for the uh, throttle bodies or the uh, the IDF throttles popping. I got an idea. I think I know what's happening, and uh, it's a simple mod, but that's another story. But um, gas tank, I've been filling it up all the way to the brim, so no leaks the last month. Like I said, I didn't want to post this shit and have it leak. So there's a repair. No leaks. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video. I uh, hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Hit like and subscribe. Adios muchachos, adios muchachas. Let's see. I'm gonna give it the beans right here. And here we go. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah, she's got beans. GTI has beans. It literally wants to rip my head off. <laughs> <laughs>